Hello, dear friends. I have long been fascinated by the Book of the Treasure and the Padlock by King Alfonso X the Wise, where he narrates his humble pilgrimage to Alexandria in search of a wise alchemist who taught the art of making the philosopher's stone. Opinion piece. Alfonso X, a wise alchemist, 8th centenary of this king. Spain resurrects the wisest king. Few know his hermetic legacy. He was the wisest king 8 centuries ago. He planted the seed of interculturality. He applied laws emanating from the divine source, esteemed from the emerald tablet of Hermes, took refuge in poetry, law and history. He said that honor is always due to the wise. He gave instructions on how to make the philosopher's stone. He also published the book of astrological knowledge. If he were alive today, he would be astonished by so much confrontation. The Alphonsian science encompasses astronomy, astrology, and magic. The Toledo School of Translators was famous in Europe. It translated the Book of Picatrix of Sympathetic Magic and Astrology. The Book of the Treasure and the Padlock is the most mysterious of them all. He went to a pilgrimage to Alexandria in search of the secret of the philosopher's stone. An alchemist from Alexandria taught him the secret of transmutation. His universal legacy is the heritage of the entire Spanish-speaking community. Let's start. When a wise uh, humanist leader emerges, it is not a question of monarchy or republic, but of human quality, something that this occurs in politics in the world we live in, a, professional, a profession full of illiterates because merit and service to the people are not rewarded, but submission to the unspeakable interests of the dark power hidden in the shadows. Non-political formula guarantees the quality of the leaders, which is after all the only thing that interests trust, not great ideals of empty promises that are never fulfilled, but deeds and works in favor of their people. When there is a wise leader, whether he is a king or not, he must be recognized. People of quality are scarce in monarchies and republics. What about are politicians who, said, who sell their souls to the devil? As El Cantar de Miocid said, what a good vassal he would be if he had a good lot. This phrase resonated with me when I had a tyrannical boss. But we have what we have, and it is not good. In the end, the only way to avoid abuse is to seek financial independence. The truth is the truth, whether Agamemnon or his swineherd says so. Alfonso X was a wise esoteric alchemist and astrologer, and he respected and enriched all the gachas of his time. If he had been president of a republic, he would have recognized him equally, because in the end it does not depend on the system of government, but on the quality of the leaders. If any Spanish king deserve the, deserves the title of humanist, it would be Alfonso X, better known as the wise king. Alfonso X crowned himself king at the foot of his father's tomb, summoned his first court, and died in the royal Alcázar of Seville, an alchemical city par excellence 
for which he never felt abandoned, neither in the heat of political battle nor in the heat of his own life. The famous modern alchemist Fulcanelli traveled frequently to Seville, a city for which he felt a great devotion. The Toledo City Council unanimously approved the proposal to celebrate the 8th centenary of the birth of Alfonso X the Wise between November 2021 and December 2022. Homage Spain resurrects Alfonso X. Spain celebrates a figure that incomprehensibly remains almost forgotten in its history, according to Gonzalo Huanche. Cities and institutions remember the Mac left eight centuries ago by a king. Alfonso X emerges as a Spanish speaking heritage to unite the trenches that confront us. Alfonso X, the tenth is still known today as the wise king. And no wonder cities such as Toledo, Murcia, and especially Seville, where the king settled his, his kingdom, died and is buried, managed to pay tribute to an unclassifiable figure in the good sense of the word. He began by creating common rules of the game for all, a new justice. Las Siete Partidas de Alfonso. His partidas renewed the existing laws and rules, which were the foros, reconnecting with Roman law and creating legal uniformity in his territory. In addition, he bequeathed culture and entertainment as a citizen's right. The Cantigas de Santa Marias are the best example. He undertook a gigantic undertaking to collect much of the knowledge that was circulating at that time in Europe and had it translated. On a certain occasion, Alfonso X the Wise, very fond of chess, wanted to choose a counselor among several candidates. He played chess with all of them and only two won. Then he then ordered those two to play six games against each other, and one of the candidates won them all. And so the surprise of his courtiers. Alfonso chose the loser as his advisor. I don't have the explanation, but I'm sure it exists. Chronicles. Eight centuries ago, in the second half of the 13th century, the king of Castile promoted the elaboration of two great chronicles, one of Spain and the other universal. He also published the Book of Astrological Knowledge, belonging to the royal desk of Alfonso X the Wise. When he is defined as a universal king, it implies that his cultural legacy belongs to the entire speaking Spanish Spanish speaking community. Alfonso X the Wise reigned in Castile and Leon between 1252 and 1284. Lacking the charisma of his father, Ferdinand III, he had to face the economic crisis that hit Europe from the middle of the 13th century and the rebellion of the nobility. nobility. Cornet by his enemies, the monarch took refuge in culture, poetry, law, and also history. His work in the later field resulted in a biography of Alexander the Great, and above all, two great historical works, the general history and the history of Spain. The king is recognized as the author of the work, although he clarifies in the introduction of the general history that he didn't write it in his own hand writing, but limited himself to giving the guidelines for the work and correcting it. The sources used were the Bible, the Castilian Chronicles, and the first half of the 13th century 
popular romances, Latin classics, ecclesiastical legends, and Arab chronicles. Origin. There is a certain inclination to always relate the Toledo school of translators to the wise king, when in fact its creation took place in the 12th century by the Archbishop of Toledo and the Grand Chancellor of Castile from 1126 to 1150, Raymond of Sauvetat, a Cistercian monk of French origin. However, its gem is found in the pressure exerted on Jews and some Muslims by the attacks of the Almoravid and Almohad invaders, who during the 11th and 12th centuries forced them to immigrate to Christian peninsula kingdoms of the north, bringing with them all the wisdom acquired by the Arab culture during the last centuries. Thus, it was Toledo since 1085, a Christian city conquered by Alfonso VI of Castile, the city chosen to create in it the nucleus from which to spread all that culture. School of Translators Alfonso X is recognized for the literary, scientific, historical and legal work carried out by his royal desk. Alfonso X sponsored, supervised and often participated with his own writing and in collaboration with a group of Latin, Hebrew and Islamic intellectuals known as the School of Translators of Toledo in the composition of an enormous literacy, literary work that initiated to a great extent the prose in Castilian. He wrote from his pen the Cantigas de Santa Maria and other beautiful verses, and thus made a great contribution to the cultured language of the time in the court of the kingdom, the Galician Portuguese, which by its noble author has endured. Alfonso summoned for this work a group of scholars in Hebrew, Arabic and Latin languages with whom he formed his royal desk, also known as the Toledo School of Translators. He counted on the collaboration of Christians, Jews and Muslims, who developed an important scientific work by rescuing texts of antiquity and translating Arabic and Hebrew texts in Latin and Spanish. The fame of the Toledo School of Translators was well known in Europe and students and intellectuals came to be determined to penetrate Arab science and to learn about Greek texts who were reimagining after centuries of science. In this way, the new texts written in classical Latin were then passed on the different languages of Europe. Books on alchemy, mathematics, medicine, natural history, physics, psychology, logic, morals, metaphysics and politics. The Organum of Aristotle, glossed or abrased by Arab philosophers, such as Al-Kindi, Al-Farabi, Avicenna, Al-Ghazali and Averroes. The works of Euclid, Ptolemy, Ptolemy, Galen and Hippocrates, with the works of Galen, Hippocrates, with notes and commentaries by al Huraizmi, Al-Batenio, Avicenna, Averroes, Al-Petragio, and others, and numerous works hitherto unknown in Europe for centuries, and whose study was to contribute to the development of the Renaissance. A universal language. These works would definitely establish Castilian as a cultured language, both in the scientific and literary fields. From his reign, it will also be used as the language of the royal chancellery, as opposed to Latin, which was the official language of regular use in the royal diplomacy of Castile and Leon. The commitment to Castilian brought him many detractors, the noble elites of Castile and the ecclesiastical ones 
looked at him with, with suspicion because of his popularization of the language and of knowledge. But the king understood that language should unite, not separate. Using Castilian as the backbone of his kingdom was one of his spikes in modernity. He also created in Seville general studies or schools of Latin and Arabic. He also founded the school of, of Murcia in 1269, directed by the mathematician Al Ricotti. He elevated the general studies of Salamanca 1254 and Palencia 1263 to the rank of university. Salamanca being the first to hold this title in Europe. Justification of the Reconquest King Alfonso X, X, in his History of Spain, sought to justify the right of the kings of Castile and Leon to reconquer the territories of Al-Andalus. Therefore, he presents the Spaniards, Castilian Christians, as descendants of Tubal, fifth son of Japheth and grandson of the patriarch Noah, who founded the city of Toledo after the universal flood. They were the first settlers of the peninsula, which they entered through the Pyrenees and to which they gave the name of Hesperia, after the star Espero. Thus, the history of Spain was linked to biblical times. The Muslims of Al-Andalus, on the other hand, were foreign invaders, although the Andalusian heritage is now part of the legacy and cultural heritage of Spain. And Alfonso describes their occupation as bloody and ferocious since the Battle of Guadalete, in quotes. Since the battle was ended unhappily and all were killed, one and all the others, because in truth there was no one in the land who did not come to the battle, from one end to the other, in aid of King Rodrigo, the whole land was empty of people, full of blood, bathed in tears, fulfilled of surnames, host of strangers, alienated from the neighbors, forsaking of the dwellers, windowed and desolate of their children, confused of the barbarians, diminished by the sword, failed of strength, thin of strength, one of knowledge and desolate of the lot of their own. Close quotes. Esoteric Legacy Alfonso X gave great, great importance to the mythology so much so that the gods of Olympus appear as human beings whom posterity elevates to the rank of gods for their wisdom of his or his strength. Alfonso X recognizes certain flashes of splendor that worked the miracle of maintaining in this land of generation and corruption. A slight reflection of the celestial paradise described by the prophets as soon as we sharpen our eyes and ears, we will notice that those luminous periods were governed by those rulers who embraced the causes forever defended by the hermetic philosophy emanating from heaven. Let us remember then the first of them all announced by that emerald tablet written by the great sage Hermes Trimegistus, thrice great, that first prophet called Idris by the Muslims and Enoch by the Christians. As above, so below, and as below, so above. That is to say, the Rala who would allow his kingdom to be fertilized by the pure waters coming from the lost emanating from the divine source would lead it rightly towards the prosperity and wisdom and the history of humankind offers numerous examples of them, certainly scarce, if we compare them with the periods of darkness in which human beings were ruled by the last of 
glory, power, wealth, and vanity that only generated atrocities. Magic and astrology. Alphonse science encompasses three major fields, astronomy, astrology, and magic. The first text promoted by Alfonso, of which we have news, was the Lapidary, rescued in 1243, when he was 22 years old, and which was translated into Spanish in 1250. It is an astrological lapidary, which shows the relationship of the stones, which is degree of the zodiacal signs, which would favor the use of the apicius and properties. The driving idea of Alfonso's scientific work seems to reside in the correspondence of broad resonances, although framed in the Aristotelian tradition. Between macrocosmos and microcosm, between the universe and the human being, Alfonso X relies on this idea from a practical perspective, with the aim of knowing the secrets of destiny and preparing to face them in the best conditions, of with the aim of transforming reality through magical procedures. The astrological texts give the guideline to build a horoscope and to interpret it, and the Alphonsian magic is to a great extent an astral magic directed fundamentally to the construction of talismans in the right astrological conditions. The Book of Picatrix He commissioned the translation of three different astrological treaties. Libro cumplido en los judicios de las estrellas, Libro de las cruces, and Quadripartitum. For their part, the magical text have been very precariously preserved, and are known for the most part thanks to Latin translations, which also had an extraordinary impact on the European intellectual tradition, especially the Picatrix and the Liber Racialis. The Book of Picatrix is the current name for a 400-page work of magic and astrology, originally written in Arabic under the title Gayat al-Hakim, translated as the purpose of the sage or the aim of the sage. The Picatrix is a treatise on sympathetic and astral magic that describes down the smallest detail the process of making talismans, as well as the capacity that some of these could have to activate the processes of transformation of the soul. Alfonso X ordered the translation of other texts such as the Mifta al Hikma, a text of alchemical character, translation preserved also thanks to a Latin version of it, with the title of Clavis Sapiente. It was Jewish intellectuals who carried out the Arabic versions, and with them collaborated Christian masters who, while in the previous context, had been in charge of the Latin version. The most unique of this text seems to be the Liber Racialis, a text of Kabbalistic magic, the book of astromagic and the book of astrological lore. And that's all for today. Thanks a lot, dear friends.